Just think about it. We live in a world today where we can basically fit a supercomputer in our pockets. We can communicate with pretty much anyone at any time in any place at almost the speed of light. We have AI that can generate art. We have cars that could drive themselves. And we even have smart houses that may know us even more than we know ourselves. From the first computer filling up an entire room to the latest smartphone just fitting in our hands. Technology has evolved at an astounding pace. But for every groundbreaking invention, there's always a setback. A moment where even the biggest tech companies got it spectacularly wrong. It's easy to celebrate the successes, but today we're shining light on the failures. The products that crashed and burned. The ideas that quite didn't make it. And the decision always had people asking, what were they thinking? So here are the top five biggest tech company failures. Number one, the Galaxy Note 7. Now look, I already touched base on this in my previous video, so I'm not gonna go into too much. But what basically happened was the battery was overheating because it was too much power given to the battery from the CPU or whatever components that were giving it too much power. So basically, out of randomness, the, no matter which one it was, the phone would just catch fire and just overheat and it, would just, it was just a terrible thing. So, they recalled it, sent more back out, tried to fix the issue, recalled it again, and then they released the Galaxy Note FE, which people actually loved, and it was a great phone, but the reputation was damaged just because of that Galaxy Note 7. They have since not done anything like that, so they've built their reputation back, but, but the Galaxy Note 7 was definitely very scary at the time. I remember fondly watching this and actually making fun of Samsung about it, but then more and more of it happening, it actually got worse and worse, so I actually, like, it was kind of a bad situation. But, like, reports of cell phones blowing up and stuff like that are, like, consistent. There's always going to be, like, that you can't stop that no matter what. You can't sell 10 million phones and they're not, and not one of them is going to explode. It's not going to happen. One or two of them is going to happen. So, it's just, yeah. But when Samsung did it, it was just, like, a big hit that they actually didn't know what to do because every phone was pretty much exploding. I just want to know how it got out of production without it exploding or without that happening. I want to know what actually went into that beforehand, but... It's in the past, so it's whatever. Number two, the Microsoft Zune, the iPod killer. See, you now back in the 2000s, Apple was really dominated in the music industry. You guessed it, their iPod. So Microsoft wanted a piece of that. Enter the Zune, iPod killer. It has some cool features like wireless syncing and a large screen, but it never really caught on. For one, the design was really clunky compared to the sleek design of the iPhone, and the marketing campaign didn't do it any favor. The Zune was discontinued in 2011, and Microsoft quietly moving on, pretending the whole thing never happened. I guess they never learned uh, not to compete with Apple because the Windows Phone also failed. Check out the video. Number three, Google Plus, the social media network nobody asked for. Now, when Google decided to go head to head with Facebook, they launched Google Plus, a social network that was supposed to revolutionize the way that we connect. But it basically became an equivalent to an empty mini mall. A lot of space, nobody there. See, now Google Plus launched in 2011. It had some interesting ideas, like circles where you could organize your friends like into groups but it was too complicated and people were already deeply attached to Facebook. Despite Google's best efforts, Google Plus gained no traction and shut down in 2019. After a data breach exposed a lot of people's information. Number four, Apple Maps. See, Google shouldn't touch certain things. Apple shouldn't touch certain things. Microsoft shouldn't touch certain things. Oh boy, the headache inducing console. In the mid 90s, Nintendo wanted to venture on to virtual reality, but instead of immersing into a new world, it mostly just gave you headaches and a disappointment. But back then, it was just a bad idea. And if we didn't have these particular flops, we wouldn't have the amazing Catch on the next one.